With Dave Filoni's new promotion, he is now one move away from taking over the entire franchise. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? And are we about to have an enormous amount of changes in Star Wars? Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Coach here. We stream every Thursday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Star Wars and all kinds of other entertainment that we love and enjoy and that we always talk about. Thank you for being here. Now, the news that we're talking about. Dave Filoni right here. This guy. A lot of people are fans of Dave Filoni. A lot of people have a lot of disdain for Dave Filoni. You know, and we're going to get into all of that. But we're going to talk about the promotion. And we want to look and see what he has to say. But before we get into that, we got to see the roadmap of what has actually taken place. For instance, do you remember this? All the way back in May of 2021, which we covered here on EBN, the Mandalorian uh, cast celebrates as Dave Filoni is now executive creative director of Lucasfilm. Now, this is two years ago. Uh, two and a half years ago at this point. And if you guys remember, if you let me take you back to this time. When, when this hit, when everybody saw that Dave Filoni had this title in this position at Lucasfilm's website, this is the only place that you found it because they never made an official announcement. After the news hit and everybody's like, oh my gosh, Dave Filoni's been promoted. When did this happen? Oh my God. Everybody was talking about it. Then they came out and said, oh, He's had that position. There's nothing new here. Uh, everything's under control. Situation normal. Kind of a weird ordeal there that he is in this position that he's in. And he's a basically a cornerstone of Star Wars of the last 20 some odd years. And they quietly ushered him, you know, into a promotion, into a, into a seat of power. And there was no official announcement. All right, so that happened. But then, just the other day, he was promoted to chief creative officer to oversee all future Star Wars storytelling. Carrie Beck, who we know uh, is the new head of development, which, you know, she doesn't have a whole lot of fans herself. I do believe that Dave Filoni has way more people that, that like him than, than Carrie Beck. But anyways, uh, Dave Filoni has been promoted to chief creative officer. Now, wait a minute. Doesn't that sound really similar to uh, executive creative director? Executive creative director, chief creative officer. I'm so confused. All that is irrelevant. Just know that Dave Filoni has been put into a position where... When Kathleen Kennedy hits the exit, when she actually leaves, she's going to leave eventually. The lady is, bless her, you know, whatever, uh, in her 70s. And she's not going to be around too much longer, you know, in the position that she is in. So is she grooming Filoni for a takeover? Well, according to The Verge, they're saying for sure. Dave Filoni gets the keys to the Star Wars franchise and he has them right now. And here's the main difference that we're going to experience moving forward. Dave Filoni is no longer going to be somebody who is brought in after the ball has already been rolling on a show, on a movie, on a production. Now he's going to be on early in the process. He might actually come up with the ideas himself. So let's see exactly what he had to say. Filoni told Vanity Fair he'll now be involved at the inception of everything that happens in the franchise, you know, and he has not been uh, at all as far as that is concerned. He'll keep his executive vice president title and his director role on the New Republic film that connects to the stories of Ahsoka, The Mandalorian, and The Book of Boba Fett. Is that all? It feels like they're, they're forgetting something, maybe like a skeleton crew or something. I, oh, I don't know. Uh, for many fans, that'll be a thrilling prospect. I know I'm not the only one who hopes to see Grand Admiral Thrawn on the big screen. Filoni has been behind the scenes of Star Wars since taking on directing and supervisory roles for the animated Clone Wars film and TV series. He developed the Rebel series that Ahsoka draws from for a huge part of its lore. You could say that again. It was 
Rebel Season 5. And he went on to work as a producer for Jon Favreau's The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett in a very real way. Filoni's work has kept Star Wars alive on screens after the movies fell flat with many of its fans. Not that the streaming shows haven't had their stumbles. Thank goodness that they're even addressing that. So ultimately what I want to say is Dave Filoni was tested. We put him out in the waters. We put him out in the deep waters with Ahsoka. And he had a chance to show us if he was worth his salt. Opinions are all over the place. Personally, I didn't think that the show was very good. The Mandalorian season one and two, excellent. Andor, very good. The Book of Boba Fett, it went down, man. The Mandalorian, it went, uh, season three, it went down. The stock was dropping. And I mean that both literally and figuratively, of course, because we all know what happened to the Walt Disney World or the Walt Disney stock, uh, at, even though it is at the current time coming back up a little bit. Um, but Dave Filoni has been involved in the process on a lot of these streaming shows, not with Andor, but with the Mandoverse. And now he's actually in a position where he is over John Favreau. You know, in the beginning, uh, when God created the heavens and the earth, you know, John Favreau was the one that was over Dave Filoni as the showrunner, as the creative for The Mandalorian, and then moving into the book of Boba Fett. That is no longer the case. Dave Filoni will get the ultimate say moving forward, even on The Mandalorian and where it heads. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Maybe that was already happening in season three. I, I wouldn't think so because Filoni didn't have that uh, that title. And all of this is, I mean, we could all speculate on these things. How involved is Kathleen Kennedy? Does she does she throw a, a monkey wrench in it and mess everything up? How involved is John Favreau? Is John Favreau taking a step back and letting other people like Dave Filoni make decisions that he didn't let make before? But all of that is just speculation. It's well and fine. But what we know is that Dave Filoni has this new position. And moving forward, he's going to be um, definitely more involved to the max. Involved to the max. And here's what we know now, too. If it doesn't work out, we know who we could point the fingers at. And Kathleen Kennedy just put him in a position where he could actually be the fall guy. He really could be. If things don't work out, she could go, him, cowboy hat. It was his fault. His fault. I tell you, his fault. And that kind of sucks for Dave, but you know what? At least they actually made a move. As a lifelong fan of Star Wars and the franchise, I mean, I love Star Wars. Love Star Wars, okay? Okay. I don't love Disney Star Wars. I don't. I hate the sequel trilogy, and a lot of the streaming shows has not worked out, and they have to course correct, or they're going to create a, or they're going to put Star Wars in a position where no fans are interested. You can't kill a franchise. You can't. As long as they make something. So somebody is going to watch it. I read a post that my good friend J-Man wrote the other day. Hey, J-Man, what is up, bro? And he was absolutely right, saying you can't kill Star Wars. You can't kill any franchise. As long as they come out with something, somebody's going to watch it. It's about interest, and it's about numbers. And the problem is, for Star Wars, the interest and the numbers have been declining at a terrible rate because they're given a subpar entertainment. So now... Star Wars, Lucasfilm, Disney, all of them have put all of their eggs in Dave Filoni's basket. Is that wise? We're going to find out. I want to know what you guys think. You already told me a little bit on this poll that we had over on our community page. Is Dave Filoni's promotion a good thing or for the future of Star Wars? Yes, 31% of our uh, people who voted you know, we were up to 1.4 thousand votes. Go and see this poll. And fat thumb alert, 
I said me. It should be no. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. 69% say no. And we got comments here. I'd say if the sequels weren't in existence, he'd pull off something better than what we currently have, all because he is bound by existing films. It's not going to change anything. Filoni, while I believe he has good intentions, is first and foremost a yes man. Well, there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, my good friend Mark Cohen says, This is one of the only YouTubers that's negative to Dave. Coach, happy Thanksgiving. May God bless you and your family. Always live long and prosper. Well, uh, you know, we definitely can be negative towards Filoni because if he gives us a show that's not what we, you know, it's not up to par, we are going to be, we're going to hold him accountable. That's what fans have to do. Uh, you know there's two decisions that could save Star Wars. Well, sell it is one of them for sure. Disney's committed to the sequel trilogy since that's where everything ends anyways. It really doesn't matter. There is no house cleaning or redo coming. And to that point, I agree. There is no retcon. It's not happening. They're not going back. The sequels is what happened in Star Wars. Unfortunately, Disney put Star Wars in a terrible position. And let's see what Dave Filoni comes up with in the next couple of years. Thank you for being here. We are You Are Echo Base Network. See you on the next one.